Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to give you a behind the scenes look at how I use ConvertKit in my business. ConvertKit is an email marketing tool that I've been using for the last couple of years now, and it's what I use to send my email newsletters, and it drives all of the email automation in my business for things like sales funnels, purchase follow-up emails, and email courses, things like that. If you have any questions at the end of this video about ConvertKit or anything that I'm showing you here, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Now, one of the things that I noticed is quite unique about ConvertKit when I initially signed up is that unlike other email management tools like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign that let you create multiple email lists, in ConvertKit, you have just one list. And I actually think this is really good because it really simplifies things. The issues you often run into when you have multiple lists that you can create is that if you have a subscriber on multiple lists on two or three, if they unsubscribe from one and they're still on another one, you might accidentally email them and the subscriber may not even know that they're on multiple lists, so they get annoyed and it can lead even to spam complaints as well. By having just one list in ConvertKit, it actually means managing your subscribers and controlling what types of emails they get is a lot simpler and easier. So here I am inside my ConvertKit account. I'm on the subscribers uh, tab here. Now, because we only have one list, the way we organize our subscribers or segment them into different categories or buckets is uh, uh, via a couple of ways. Firstly, we can use tags. Tags are kind of like the labels that you can apply to a subscriber to specify what they're interested in or maybe to show what actions they've taken. So I have quite a lot of tags. You might look at this and feel like there's quite a lot going on. I won't explain everything here, but I have some tags that I use to control uh, what emails people should get as they progress through uh, my online courses. I've got some flag tags here, which are very much just part of all the different automated funnels and sequences that I have. The main tags that I wanted to show you are these ones here. So because in ConvertKit you have just one list, I've got these tags, Newsletter, Newsletter Asana, Pipedrive, and Zapier, which are, they are tags, but I kind of use them to show what people are interested in or what type of newsletter they should get. So newsletter is for my generic uh, Monday newsletter, but then if I'm sending a newsletter related to Asana specifically, I can use that tag to target a specific group of subscribers. And of course, a subscriber could have multiple tags on their profile, so they might choose to get both my Asana and Pipedrive newsletter if they like. And this is nice because it means I can personalize what content people get. Rather than sending all of my content and all of my videos to absolutely everyone, if a subscriber is only interested in my Asana videos, I can then just send them Asana content and I don't have to bother them with other stuff that they may not be interested in. Some of the other ways that I use tags, I use them to show what products people have been pitched on. So I often use these at the end of an automation sequence to show that they've now been pitched a certain product. And I can use that to then filter them out if I'm running uh, this at uh, the sale again. I can make sure that maybe they don't get pitched uh, too quickly again. And then I also have these purchase tags to show which products people have purchased. So once they purchase, uh, they, they get the purchase tag added via my... Um, integration with my e-commerce provider, that can trigger, number one, a thank you follow-up email to just say thank you and what to expect next. But it also means that if I update one of my products, I can easily message my subscribers who have purchased that product to tell them about the, the update. So those are tags. That's one of the primary ways that we can organize and group people into different areas or different cohorts within uh, ConvertKit. Another tool that I use in ConvertKit to segment my list is custom fields. So custom fields are the fields we can see on the left-hand side here on a subscriber that we can use to store text and various bits of information about that subscriber. So the most common example of this is you'll see there's a default field for the person's name, uh, first name, and their email. I can then use that first name, I can personalize the email, and instead of just saying hi there, I can say hi, and then I can reference their name, in this case, Paul. But then I use a lot of custom fields just in the background to segment uh, subscribers into different areas and, and just collect a bit more information about the kinds of things people are interested in. So for example, on my website, I give away book summaries. I use this book summary custom field to show which summary somebody has requested. 
And then when they get their automated email, this field gets used and it will link them to the correct summary that they've chosen to download. I also use a range of custom fields here to collect information about some of the services that I offer. For example, I have these MA fields. MA stands for Master Asana, which is one of the products or programs that I offer on my website. And so I can use these fields to collect information about the challenges they're having with Asana, what is their goal or what are they trying to achieve with the tool, what stage are they at? Are they new to Asana or have they been using it for a little while? And have they signed up to my program? I can see if they uh, are an active member of my program. Maybe their membership has expired. And so I use these fields to store information about, yeah, their goals, their challenges, and their current status. And the way I do that is using a special opt-in tool that connects with ConvertKit called Write Message. So when you come to my website, if you want to learn more about Asana, I'll ask you some of these questions, like, what is the size of your team using Asana? I can then say, I'm using it on my own. I'll ask, what stage are you at with your use of Asana? I can say, I'm, I'm brand new. What's the challenge you're having? What's the number one thing you'd like to achieve? And, and various questions like that. And so then as I um, go through these questions, eventually you get to an opt-in form that looks a bit like this where the subscriber would fill in their name, their email, and of course their email. And so all of the responses that they've given, uh, along with obviously their contact information, will populate these fields. So then when I'm sending an email, uh, and especially if, if they go into one of my sales funnels and they're getting pitched on one of my products or services, rather than just sending a generic email to everyone, I can actually personalize the content. So here's an example of that. Here's one of my uh, sequences. This goes out to people when they're sort of being nurtured. Uh, I deliver some um, useful tips about planning their Asana structure. And down here, you can see some text and it's got some of these um, kind of squ squiggly bracket things going on. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using the data in those fields to make the content dynamic. So I'm saying if their goal is to learn about features, I can insert this, uh, this sentence into the email. So rather than sending the same generic email to everyone, I can personalize the email based on the challenges or the goals that they have so that it feels a little bit more uh, personalized to what it is that they're trying to achieve. I also use some of these custom fields to trigger different automations as well. So this status field, this is a really important field that I use to show who are my current customers signed up to my program. And if I change this to a certain value, if I change this to expired and I, I save this now, by changing that uh, to expired, that's going to trigger a sequence or an email follow-up uh, mentioning that their subscription has expired and asking if they'd like to renew. So really, I use these custom fields to collect quite a lot of information that I use uh, in my email sequences, but also to trigger various automations as well. So back on this subscribers page now, I've talked about tags and I've talked about custom fields. Those are the two main ways that we can collect information and categorize subscribers in different ways. And then finally, you have this uh, area here for segments. Segments are kind of like cohorts of subscribers that you can create based on different criteria. So if I create a segment, I can say, right, show me people who are subscribed to a certain tag if they've used one of my or they've got a purchase tag maybe they've purchased a certain product because i've got my email into my uh, e-commerce integration set up i can segment people based on the email sequences that they've been sent or have completed or even the forms that they've signed up through as well and when building my segment i can include multiple conditions so i've got a tag here and then i could even uh, look for a custom field and i could say right here are all my custom fields Show me ones where the MA status contains active. And so now my, my segment or my cohort here is looking at not just tags, but custom field data as well. So I can save this segment, I can give it a name. And so once I have my saved segment, I can, I can look at all those subscribers and I can easily email this group of people as well. So that's a little look at how I manage my subscribers in various ways. Next, I wanna show you how I'm using landing pages and forms, because this is how people ultimately get onto your list in the first place. So you can see I have quite a lot of forms here. Uh, I'll actually start by showing you a landing page. So this is one of the great things about ConvertKit. I can just create a simple web page and actually I can house this under my own domain if I like. 
So here's one that I've created that I link people to from my YouTube videos. So I've customized it here, you know, some of the copy and uh, text that I want to include. I can customize the fields in here. So you can see I'm asking for their first name and email address. If I click this plus button, I can, I can um, add in additional custom fields in here as well. I've also, I also ask people here, what would you like to be updated about? So you can see here, based on the checkbox that they select, it's going to opt them into those different newsletter lists or really their tags like we discussed. Uh, I can add the various tags to that subscriber when they sign up. And so once I have this page ready, using the ConvertKit WordPress plugin, I can actually create a WordPress page on my site. And uh, you can see here I have the option of linking this WordPress page to a specific form or landing page on my site. So I've done that here. And so now if I send people to this URL, they're going to, it's, it's all under my domain, but it's actually showing them a convert kit form. I also have various forms on my website. So you'll see in my sidebar, I've got this uh, little opt-in where people can put in their name and email and subscribe here to get my productivity blueprint. There's also one down in the footer down the bottom. And so here's an example of that one, how it looks in the back end in uh, ConvertKit. Again, I can choose the, the text. I can specify the fields that I want to um, have people fill in and download buttons. I can change colors and things like that. So you can see it's pretty easy to make the, the, um, the, the feel and the design of the form be pretty consistent uh, with my website. So it all looks really kind of nicely integrated. So the ConvertKit forms and landing pages are great. But as I mentioned before, I also use a third party tool called Write Message for some of the more advanced forms on my website. So with Write Message, I can do something uh, pretty cool like this, where I can say, if the current WordPress blog post that they're on is productivity, self-improvement or technology, I can choose to show a form. And you've, you can see this sort of decision tree here where if they are not a subscriber, they'll go down this branch. I can ask a couple of questions related to why they're interested in productivity. And so you can see I'm actually syncing with my custom field here and I'm mapping why are they interested in productivity? What's their goal and uh, what's their biggest challenge right now? So I'm actually mapping these responses to those custom fields that I showed you before before I then um, ask if they'd like to receive a free download. And so on the front end, it looks a bit like this. So I'm on a productivity blog post and it says, you know, why do you want to be more productive? I can say I want to grow my business. Uh, what do you struggle with? I struggle with having too much to do and not knowing how to keep up. And then it says here, yeah, you can opt in, get my blueprint, and uh, this is going to help you. And so then when they receive that blueprint, it's going to be a little bit more personal because I've gathered a little bit of information about what they'd like help with. Now, one of the main ways I use ConvertKit on a weekly basis is to send various newsletters. So I'm now under the send broadcast tabs. So a broadcast, that's kind of what I'm calling a newsletter. A broadcast is basically like a one-time email where you can choose a group of people you want to send that email to, you design the content, and then you click send. So I use this in various ways. I do uh, group call reminders for my clients. They get sent through here. I've got a newsletter scheduled to go out tomorrow. I use this to send emails to my various newsletter tags. So here's one here from Friday where I emailed just people who were interested in Pipedrive. So here's what it looks like to design a newsletter or to send a broadcast rather. So I can set up my subject line. If I want to, I could even A, B test different subject lines. So I can just, I can write in two subject lines here. I can then let ConvertKit send uh, two versions of the email to a small group of subscribers if for each of them. It will then analyze which one gets the best open rate before sending the best uh, subject line to the remaining people on that list. So it's a great way of actually having ConvertKit work out the best way or the most uh, attractive kind of subject line for you to use. Uh, there are various templates that you can set up. I've got different templates with really just different footers for the different uh, newsletters that I use. I like um, to send pretty plain, simple text-based emails, but ConvertKit does let you design uh, nicely designed sort of HTML emails as well. You can see an example here of what I mentioned before where based on different custom fields, I can customize the uh, call to action. So a customer receiving this newsletter will have a slightly different call to action versus a non-customer. So again, it's a really nice way that I can tailor my message and make sure subscribers get the content or the call to action that is relevant to them. Before I send my email, I can choose who do I want this, this broadcast to be sent to. So very similar to how I built a segment, I can choose if I want to send this to people that have a certain tag. 
So in this case, it's going to people that are on the, that have the newsletter Asana tag. But then down here, I'm excluding people where the lock custom field has any value. That lock field is something I use if people are getting like a, a sales funnel. I, I turn on this lock so that um, when I'm sending these broadcasts, if that lock field is filled in, I'm not emailing them a broadcast at the same time as they're in some kind of sales funnel. So I have a lot of control here over who I can send this email to, and then I can choose to send this now, or what I will often do is schedule to send these later. And the other way that I use ConvertKit is for all the automated emails, sales funnels, and sequences in my business. Now, again, I have a lot going on here. There's a lot of automation in here for different sales funnels and purchase follow-ups and things. I'm gonna show you a fairly simple one, which is, let's go to this one here. So this is sort of a pretty typical kind of nurture sequence followed by a sales funnel. So people often come to my website, they read a book summary that I have uh, uh, written, and if they want, they can choose to download that summary. So when they, when they go through that opt-in form on my website, they get tagged with resource BS, which stands for book summary. I then update a custom field here. So I have this field next offer, which is a field that I use to show the next thing that somebody is being pitched in my sort of product ladder. So I'm saying the next thing is they're being picked, pitched on book summaries. I then lock them to book summaries. So this means if I'm sending a newsletter, I can exclude people that have that lock filled in to make sure I'm not overwhelming people with too much at once. And then finally, I can choose to send them a sequence. So, and this is one of the things I really like about ConvertKit is I'm designing my automated kind of my decision tree or my workflow here. And this little block here basically represents an entire sequence of emails that I'm gonna send. So you can see the emails on the right hand side. These are the emails that I've queued up. So the first email they get is gonna be personalized with their name. And then it says, download your book, your book summary of, and then I actually put in the name of the book. So it includes a download link. This actually gets personalized with the book summary that they've chosen to get that we looked at earlier via that custom field. I then kind of, they get a little bit of content about uh, where they can sign up to learn more about my book summary. I then send, uh, after a two day delay, a list of uh, top book recommendations. And I send a couple of other emails, just generally nurturing people, being, being useful, providing some information, um, why you shouldn't read too much, that type of thing. So somebody will get this sequence, then they'll continue with the rest of the steps in the workflow. So once they've been um, pitched on my book summaries, I then have the workflow check for a couple of tags here. So it will check, have they purchased my book summaries before? If no, check if they've purchased my guidelines ebook. If no, then pitch them on my book summary library. And so this is where I can say, hey, I'm gonna run a special offer. You can download my book summary library, library for a discounted price. And again, I've got two different emails queued up to send there. So in this one sequence, I can set up all the different steps that, that lead up to those different workflows, all the actions I want to take. I can update the subscribers tags and custom fields along the way. And then if somebody purchases the book summaries during that journey, I have these events down here. So if they purchase my book summary library or a book summary bundle that I offer, anyone who's at any of these previous steps, maybe they're halfway through a sequence, by purchasing, the tag will pull them forward in the automation and then they'll skip all the other steps and go straight to this point. So it's a great way of if they're halfway through a sales funnel and they decide to purchase, they then don't complete the funnel. There's no point sending them any more emails because they've already purchased. And so I can set that up here nice and cleanly in ConvertKit. So once they purchase, I remove the lock, add them to my newsletter, and then I actually trigger a different email to ask them more about what they'd like to learn about. So there's a bit happening there with that automation, but um, what I hope you can see is they give you a really nice visual way of mapping out the different um, journeys that your subscribers can go through, uh, the email sequences that you can send, and yeah, along the way you can tag and update different custom fields as subscribers take different actions. So that is a little look at ConvertKit. I wanted to give you a fairly high level view of how I manage my subscribers, how I get them onto my list using various forms and landing pages, and some of the ways that I'm using automation. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.